Hey guys, it's day two. So I hope you have your book and that you are ready to read with me. I also want you to have your worksheet. It looks like this. So if you could grab this for me too, because we're going to start working on it together today and then we're going to finish it up tomorrow. So grab your worksheet, grab something to write with and grab your book. You need to have Animal Costumes, the book. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go through the book and I'm going to show it to you today as I read because I want to read right along with what you guys are doing in the text. And then when we're done, we're going to go back and answer some of the questions in our worksheet. Okay, so if you can't see it really great on the screen now, you need to be looking at your book anyway. So follow along with Miss Craig. We are on page three. That's what page our text starts on. And I know that because there's page three at the bottom and I'm going to read and you're going to follow along with me. All right. People wear costumes. Animals can wear costumes too. A dog can wear the wings of a butterfly. A dog can wear the mane of a lion. A goat can wear the crown of a princess. A cat can wear the bandana of a cowboy. A dog can wear the mask of a superhero. A dog can wear the fins of a shark. A rabbit can wear the hat of a nurse. A dog can wear the snout of a pig. What costume is this dog wearing? And that's a question on the last page. What costume is this dog wearing? He's dressed up like a hot dog. So grab your worksheet and this week it's a little bit different. It's got four squares, one, two, three, four. And they're, they're four different questions based on the text that we've read. So what I want you guys to do is if you look up, you can see where they're dotted. Um, if you want to cut those out and write the answers on the back, that's great. Miss Craig is just going to flip it over and write on the back of it. So if you just want to flip it over with me and you want to write your answers, you want to number them one, two, three, four, and you want to write your answers on the back, do that with me. So we're going to go through some of these questions together. Okay. The first one I'm going to read is up here in this top corner. And the question says, what is the main idea of this story? What are some details that support the main idea? So in reading, we've talked about main idea. And main idea is something that we do when we read a nonfiction text. Because we all know that fiction texts have characters and problems or solutions and a beginning, a middle, and end. A nonfiction text, like the one we just read, when we retell it, we use a main idea and details to support it. That means we have proof. For our answer, we say, I know this is the main idea because of, and then we list reasons why. Those are our details. So we're going to do that first one together. So flip your paper on over because we are going to write the main idea and three, let's write three supporting details. It says some supporting details. Let's, li let's write three. Ms. Craig likes to do three supporting details every time we do this. I like to do this. I like to do three. So I'm going to write the main idea is. And that's something that comes from the question. What is the main idea? So I'm going to restate the question. That means I'm going to say it again when I give my answer. So I'm going to say the main idea is, the main idea is, what is the main idea? 
of this text. What was the whole book about? Animals dressing in costumes. So the main idea is animals. in costumes. The main idea is animals and costumes. So if you need to slow down and see those words again, look back in the text and find them. I'll leave them just, I'll leave it up here just for a second for you guys to see. But if Miss Craig is going too fast for you, just hit pause on the um, video and then that'll give you another minute to write. The main idea is animals dress in costumes. Now, what are three supporting details from the text? That means what are three things in the text that prove that this text is about animals dressed as costumes? Well, let's open our text up. On page three, it says animals can wear costumes too. So I'm gonna write number one, two, and three, these are my three details, okay? One, two, three, got three details. Animals. Can. Wear. Costumes. And I saw that on page three. So I'm gonna put on page three. Because it says on page three that animals can wear costumes too. Maybe that'll help with the glare a little bit. Animals can wear costumes too. It says that on page three of our text. Let's go find two more details. This dog is dressed like a butterfly. And this dog is wearing a mane. I might write a dog is wearing a mane. I think that's my second detail. A dog is, we talked about where is one of those tricky words. So you might want to copy it from the book. Where, like what are you, what you wear on your body. Where, and then we add the ing, which are the letters I, N, G. A dog is wearing a mane. And I know that's the long vowel A because there's a magic E on the end that makes that M A N. And that E shoots his sparks back to the A, okay? A dog is wearing a mane. What else is happening in this story? Well, on this page, a dog is wearing fins. Like a shark, remember? He was dressed like a shark. So I'm going to write A. Dog can, that word wear again, and fins, fins, a dog can wear fins. So that's the first answer on our page. What is the main idea of the story? The main idea is animals in costumes. What are some details that support the main idea? Well, animals can wear costumes on page three. A dog is wearing a mane and a dog can wear fins. Those are all supporting details, okay? Let me erase this and we're gonna do the next question. Hold on one second. Let me get my eraser back here. It works better. And you guys are getting ready for the second question. So you might want to write a number two. Because this, this is the next question you are going to answer. All right. Here we go. Let me get a different color marker each time. That might help too. All right, ready? Question number two. How are the dogs in the story alike? How are they different? 
So do you know what I love to do when I'm talking about how things are alike and different? I like to draw a, draw and show you, and you can do this on your page too, but you can't draw it that big. You'd have to draw it smaller. Venn diagram, love a Venn diagram. So the parts where they're alike would go in the middle and the parts where they're different would go out here on the opposite sides, okay? So we're talking about how the dogs are alike and how they're different. So I'm gonna use one hand to look back at my text and talk through this one. Well, one thing I know from reading the text is that all the dogs are alike because they're all wearing some kind of costume. So that's something that they have in common. So they're all wearing costumes. So I'm gonna write costumes in the middle. I wrote the word costume in the middle because they all have one of those on. This dog's dressed like a butterfly, so he's wearing wings. And this dog has a lion's mane. So those are different things. This dog's wearing wings. Or a mane. So I wrote those on each side because they're different things. Wings and a mane, those are different. See what else I can say. Um, oh, you know what? This is a goat, so I can't talk about the goat. This is a cat, and the question says, how are the dogs alike in this story? So I can't talk about the goat or the cat because they're not a dog. This dog's wearing a cape, and this dog's wearing fins. So those are still different things. Cape, fins. See what else I've got here. Rabbit, but he's wearing a hat. There's a dog that's wearing a snout. And then this dog is dressed like a hot dog. So he's dressed like food. So the one thing they all have in common is that they're all wearing a costume. But their costumes seem to be very different. So this dog is wearing food. He's a hot dog. This dog's dressed like a pig. He's dressed like another animal. This dog's dressed like a nurse. Uh, no, that's a bunny dressed like a nurse. Hold on. Um, this dog's dressed like a shark. This one's dressed like a superhero. And these two dogs are dressed like animals because one's dressed like a, t a lion and the other one's dressed like a butterfly. And then the one in the very front is dressed like a clown. So I could talk about the dogs that are dressed like um, animals and then people. Or I could talk about which dogs are smaller and which ones are bigger. So you can kind of answer this question in a couple different ways. And that's the thing I love about reading is sometimes you have a little bit of wiggle room with your answer to make it your own. So if you guys drew a Venn diagram, you can kind of write in that like you want to. Or you can just write two sentences. Some of the dogs are dressed like animals. Some of the dogs are dressed like things people could be. Then again, people dress like animals. So what's one thing they all had in common? Dogs and people can all wear the same costumes. So that's something that they had similar as well. So I am going to stop there today. We finished these first two questions. This one is the one we answered with the main idea and the three details. This is the one that Miss Craig drew the Venn diagram on. Another thing you guys could do is you could sketch a picture on the back where you could um, just sketch out with your pencil a picture of two dogs that look similar or two dogs that look totally different and talk about how they're different, like how the dog like a butterfly is totally different, like the dog dressed like a shark because one's dressed like an insect that flies and the other is dressed like a fish that lives in the sea. So you could kind of answer this in a couple different ways, all right? So I hope you left room on the back for tomorrow, though, because we're going to come back and we're going to answer these last two questions, and then you guys are going to be done with reading for the week. So just like I said yesterday, when you are done with your, when you're done with the video with Miss Craig, I want you to sit down and read the text one more time on your own. Just do your very best. Remember to look out for those words that we marked that are tricky. 
that we talked about the meanings of, like the word where. Look out for the ing at the end of some of the words. Look out for the O-W and O-U. Those both say ow. All right. And then if you have someone to talk to in your house about your answers, I want you to just tell them really quickly what you read about in the text and what you know about it. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow and we'll finish our work up then. Bye, guys.